I'm Chris Mikowski. Welcome to the Emerging Civil War YouTube page. And I am pleased to have with me today my friend historian John Cummings. Uh, May 8th marks the anniversary of the start of the Battle of Spotsylvania. Fewer people know more about the Battle of Spotsylvania than John Cummings. And uh, so I thought it would be cool to invite John in to uh, talk to him a little bit today about the, the Battle of Spotsylvania Courthouse and the Spotsylvania Battlefield. John, how are you doing? All right. How are you there? Fantastic. <laughs> <you really> <laughs> Got got all my uh, uh, quarantine hair, as you see. Yeah, I you know I know many people who have quarantine haircuts, meaning they haven't had one since the start of quarantine. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's over fifty five days for me. Oh man! So uh, hopefully you're weathering the storm. Well, it looks like you've got plenty of reading material to get you through. Couple things. Yeah. Just a couple, <laughs> right? So, mm -hmm. well, I, I will say, though, one of the uh, cool things that folks at home can read is uh, the Spots of the Civil War blog, if they're looking mm -hmm. for material, and that has uh, been your brainchild. Tell me a little bit about the Spots of the Civil War blog. Hmm. Well, I just figured that uh, I, since I had books in print that I also needed to have some of my uh, ongoing photo research uh, online, initially it started out being like, all things social, political, everything. I was going to be a muckraking uh, facility for for Spotsylvania County, but uh, after uh, first year or so, I really kind of got rid, you know, out of that and s strictly into the photography for the most part. Got out of the gadfly business. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I know you have spent a, a fair amount of time sort of calling the county to task at times for not being a little bit more preservation friendly. Correct. <laughs> tell, me, tell me a little bit about your, your philosophy as far as preservation and, and uh, what we should be doing uh, for these battlefields. Well, that's a, that's a hard thing because I, I've, I moved here uh, like 21 years ago and knew of some very nicely preserved uh, roads and trench works <clears throat> quite close to uh, my house. And over the years, watched them uh, get destroyed uh, by uh, equipment, uh, making the uh, sewer systems up to speed and uh, uh, just lots of negligence. It's not like the county wasn't aware of the cultural resources where they sat. I certainly spent enough time talking to them over the years about things, especially those that uh, are in the vicinity of the Myers Hill action. Uh, but we've, we've watched, uh, the one thing that really breaks my heart is, is, is this road that was part of the, uh, what they call the Anderson Road, took you up to the Anderson Farm, that plateau, um, where the six core artillery fired on May 14th. And uh, the road also witnessed probably the vast majority of the Union Army exiting Spotsylvania uh, on their way down to the North Anna. So this, this what was nicely preserved when I moved here has since been pretty well wiped out, you know. So it, it, it's sad. <laughs> Now, now to, to help orient visitors, uh, since we don't have maps or anything to show, but you live kind of on the edge of the Spotsylvania battlefield in an area known as Myers Hill, which is outside of the National Park Service boundaries. Um, right. And so it was swallowed up by a fair amount of residential development. But um, so, so you're, you know, literally kind of right there in, in part of the action. Um, but Myers Hill is kind of a recent success story. You want to talk about that for a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. When I first moved here, uh, I had in my possession a document from Company G of the 91st Pennsylvania. It was sort of like a descriptive roster and sort of pay roll for one individual who had been wounded there, a young Irish lad who had come to America and got uh, drafted, I guess, and uh, ended up being wounded here uh, on, on May 14th. Uh, his uh, company actually passed right over my property on their way to the hill. So I mean, I was in the direct path of, of uh, the 91st Pennsylvania and uh, 140th New York. Uh, 
which is always an exciting thing, <laughs> especially, uh, like I said, having, having owned these documents since the 1970s uh, and pretty much focused on their involvement on Little Round Top at Gettysburg, suddenly uh, to, to uh, find this one thing where it mentions, you know, the Meyer house. And I figured this was prior to me moving here. I was, it was like, um, gee, I'll take this document and I'll go over to the battlefield park and I'll stand there with it and have sort of this cosmic moment, you know, like here's this artifact, <laughs> but uh, Myers Hill is on private property, but now is protected by Central Virginia Battlefields Trust after 20 years of my advocacy trying to pursue people to, to, to do this. It's finally happened, and that's greatly appreciated. The Park Service had the opportunity to get it passed. Uh, preservation uh, organizations had the opportunity to get it passed, and so finally um, yeah. it was preserved by the Central Virginia Battlefield Trust uh, just a couple years ago, um, more than, uh, or actually last year, and then uh, more than 70 acres at the crest of the hill. Um, tell me a little bit about this piece of property that has been preserved. Well, on the, on the very top of the hill, we have the remains of John Henry Meyer's residence. He had purchased it just uh, the year before, uh, just bef days before the Battle of Chancellorsville. He was getting his family out of war-torn Fredericksburg. And uh, so sort of like the Wilmer McLean from Manassas to Appomattox fame, you know, the war ended up following him. Uh, he gets conscripted, but his family uh, was able to uh, hide away with other civilians that were massing uh, with the uh, uh, Confederate army nearby. Uh, but uh, Meyer was within a couple miles of his home. And so when it ends up being uh, burned down uh, by the Federal Army on May 15th, you know, undoubtedly he's able to, to see from, from the trenches over at Heath Salient, he's, he had to have been able to see the pillar of black smoke emitting and he knew there was his, his uh, uh, escape, and escape he did. Yeah. <laughs> he, he, he would end up getting himself conveniently captured on the North Anna River uh, a week or so later. He'll come back anyway. and have a very successful post-war career, so he is able to rebuild. Yeah, rebuild in town where his bakery and confectionery was. He he did not rebuild the property. He sold it uh, at a great loss uh, in 1866, uh, but he ended up becoming one of the most uh, successful businessmen in post-war Fredericksburg. The, I want to give you a chance to, to plug your research because you actually have a book on this coming out next year. Am I correct? Yeah, I've, I've been uh, promising this for quite a while. So, uh, you know, originally it was going to be the, the Myers Hill map study, but uh, it's, it's expanded well beyond that. Uh, over, over the past 20 years, my wife and I have been collecting uh, all the uh, service and pension files for uh, people who were killed, wounded, missing, and captured on Myers Hill. And so not only are we telling you know, the story of, of the fighting, but also how it affected all these individuals. Uh, some uh, very heart-rending uh, stories as well. So, uh, you know, glad, glad that it's finally coming together. <laughs> as long as the publisher doesn't go out of business with this COVID stuff. <laughs> Yeah, that has been a challenge for a lot of publishers, for sure. Yes, yes. So I think it's kind of a cool story that you you start with this document, and it relates to a couple regiments that you're associating with, with you, you've typically associated with Gettysburg. You happen to move to Spotsylvania to a piece of property where these regiments, or this, this, the 91st, um, actually has action and crosses it, and it sort of sweeps you into uh, what's become a decades-long study of Spotsylvania Courthouse. Uh, that's right. a pretty cool coincidence. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I'll, I'll tell you one, one even better. <laughs> My uh, great-great-grandfather, Frederick Unger, was with the 7th New York Heavy Artillery, and he spent 
uh, an evening a mile directly north of my house. Uh, and uh, <laughs> got wounded uh, during the um, Battle of Harris Farms. So uh, all these things that I really knew nothing about when I was moving here have all just sh showered down on me with all this wonderful good fortune. So, so as uh, someone who has then kind of dived into the study of Spotsylvania and, and the, the bat not only the battle, but the battlefield, um, what is it that you like about the battlefield in particular that, that keeps drawing you back? Well, photography mm -hmm. <laughs> is a big thing. The, uh, particularly uh, the, the work done by Dr. Reed Brockway Bontico and his entourage that visited the battlefields around Fredericksburg in April of 1866. Uh, a series of 121 stereoscopic images uh, and uh, the ones around Spotsylvania uh, are of particular interest because without them, they, we would have had no real idea of what this battlefield looked like. Uh, and you've done a number of tours with the Park Service, tours on your own, where you've taken people across the battlefield using the photos in, taken in sequence to kind of help uh, tell the story of the battle. You've done some pretty cool detective work on that. You want to share some of the, the detective work that you've done to piece together that sequence? Well, it, it, takes, it takes a while sometimes to figure some of these out. It uh, took several months to, once I finally realized that two images showed probably the most iconic image out of this series, the one with a, a wooden sign on a tree with a bivouac of the dead poem uh, painted on it. Uh, once, once I realized that there were two images showing that, I, I realized we had a triangulation and thus being able to notice things in the background, begin to line things up, uh, spent like a month focusing on the secondary trench line behind the, the uh, bloody angle, realizing it was actually uh, the main line just uh, to the left of, of where the bloody angle is. And in the background, seeing the field where Colonel Upton on, on May 10th had led his, his charge. You know, all these sort of aha moments. Uh, it, it helps put it together, especially when, when you realize sequentially all these that images that are numbered, uh, a number scrawled with, a, with an awl into this three inch square uh, piece of uh, glass. Uh, you can watch the, the sun shift and the shadow shift. Thus, you've got like a gigantic sundial and you can see the uh, progression of, of this photographic entourage across the field. So as, as he's taken this image, it's this time we can calculate with the, uh, you know, how the shadows are falling in 1866, adjust for daylight savings time, railroad time, all these nice little subtleties. <laughs> and uh, then begin to just see his path across. And it's, you just, I don't know. These are things that just, um, warm my soul. I don't know whatever the other way to say it. I just really enjoy it. So, Is there a particular spot on the battlefield that you like to visit? The whole, the whole thing really, uh, you know, I, uh, the whole thing. <laughs> mm -hmm. I know that sounds crazy, but there's, there's not any, any one, Especially when, when, when I'm doing tours and I'm taking clients around who had uh, ancestors who uh, fought and many times died there, uh, I can take them locations that are off of the park property and, uh, you know, realize, okay, where we're sitting now, look across this road and into this field, and this field caught fire and your ancestor died in that fire. You know, the, the, when I'm able to, to stand near Salem Church and say, your ancestor came through this ravine up on the hill, the Confederates appeared, opened fire on, on, on this regiment, and your ancestor was killed. And watch the tears well up in their eyes. These are the things that 
I, I, uh, it's amazing to, to be able to, to bring people that close. Again, heartrending, just like, just like the, the research we're doing with the soldiers who, who fought and died here, were captured here, went to Andersonville, the things that happened to their families, just, just the human interest stories. Big open-ended questions, Chris, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and to me, that's it's a really great reminder that, uh, you know, the guys who fought on these battlefields in some ways seem so far away and disconnected, but they're really guys that are just like us and they had families and they had descendants and that becomes a real visceral, tangible connection for ancestors who come and walk the fields and suddenly you can put them there at that spot and, you know, your family was here. Uh, it's incredible. Yep. Yep. Very good. I don't want to say satisfying. I hate saying things that sound like I'm enjoying it. I am enjoying it, but, but at the same time, it, it, I understand how sad it is. Right. I, I, anyway. <laughs> you know, me, it's, it's one of those things that, uh, you know, one of the ways that we get to help remind people of the relevance of history is to make those sorts of personal connections. I, I think your word satisfying is pretty good, um, you know, because it's got that higher purpose to it, um, you know, in a very relevant personal sort of way. I think it's amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because Spotsylvania unfolds over the course of two weeks, uh, the troops move around a lot, fighting shifts from sector to sector. That makes it a pretty complicated battle to follow, particularly since the Park Service only has a portion of the actual battlefield preserved. What challenges does that present to you when you're giving tours and showing people around and, and helping uh, explore and explain the history? Well, a lot of it is still in existence currently. Subdivisions have intruded on some things uh, in the 21 years I've been here, but for the most part, I can take people over the expanse, the uh, four to six mile uh, width of, of, of the two armies as they jockey for position and move around. So I can, I can take them all the way down the far end, uh, the uh, Poe River action, or take them all the way over to, to Harris Farm so you get you get the extremes so you you can you can still get a good understanding of it but but that is the the big thing the park doesn't own the whole thing they have the core of the battlefield as we see in the background there <laughs> that's the, the angle behind me yeah at, at the mule shoe so um just before we wrap up, I want to uh, just, again, invite people to visit your blog. When, when people go to the uh, Spotsylvania Civil War blog, um, what sort of stuff can they expect to see, and, and what do you hope they get out of it? A lot of my current photo examinations, there hasn't been much in the past year or two, so they're spread out. <laughs> but... Uh, uh, not only Spotsylvania, but also some work I've been doing with Manassas Battlefield and, and Gettysburg. Uh, don't get me started on Gettysburg. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to. We're going to stick to Spotsylvania. Today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, but uh, just, any, it, any final uh, words of wisdom or advice to folks as, as they're interested in Spotsylvania and they maybe want to learn more about it? Read, read some of the best books that are out there by Gordon Ray. His series is excellent. If you can get yourself a, a copy of Bill Motter's book, if it takes all summer, uh, it's, I believe, out of print, but, but probably easily had through Amazon as a used book. Uh, Motter's book was really about the only thing that, that was out there that, that uh, treated this campaign until Gordon Ray's series. Uh, but, uh, and of course, all the uh, voluminous uh, offerings from the Emerging Civil War series that <laughs> will help, help folks uh, visit all these battlefields. You know. yeah. Thanks so much, John. Well, it's, it's been a pleasure, a pleasure chatting with you. And uh, I know that quarantine has a lot of people hunkered down, but uh, as the anniversary of Spotsylvania unfolds, I hope you have the chance to get out and uh, explore the battlefield you love so much. We shall see. Very good. <laughs>
Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, on behalf of John Cummings, I'm Chris Bukowski here for Emerging Civil War. We will see you online and on the battlefield. All right.